All right, boys, welcome back to another Squirrely Hero Review. Today we're going to talk about Sinful Angelica, the ultimate troll hero. As always, we'll talk about her abilities, her builds, we'll do a little PvP showcase, and then we'll summarize her, because I'm sure you're all interested in learning what this troll hero is all about. Let's get started. Alright, so Sinful Angie, what do her abilities do? Her S1 is pretty basic, has a chance to put decrease attack on the enemy. I actually am kind of confused by this debuff because um, it doesn't seem to synergize that well with her kit because if you run Sinful Angie, she's definitely going to not be trying to survive that much damage anyway. But uh, it's still useful. Decrease attack is a strong buff. The biggest thing here is when she's immortal, it triggers a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. So a lot like Tamarin, and it really helps her get some huge damage out, same as like Aroz, Tamarin, etc. Because you always get that dual attack for huge, huge damage, especially since she gives them attack buff as well. Now the S2 is the key component of her kit. When she's immortal, Enemies can't be revived, and all allies get healed every time an enemy dies. That heal is not that big, by the way. It doesn't really matter that much. But the fact that they cannot be revived is huge. Hard counter to Arbiter, hard counter to Maid Chloe, kind of a counter to Ruel. Um, one thing to note about this ability that throws some people off is that this is not an extinction. It's not an extinction. So as soon as her immortality wears off, they can revive again. So keep that in mind, because um, if you start the match against like a Ruel Arbiter and then kill the Arbiter with this, uh, as soon as the immortality ends, Ruel can bring that Arbiter right back. So don't make that mistake. Now her S3 is what gives her the immortality, because as you can see, her kit relies on her being immortal. So her S3 gives her immortality um, for two turns, just her, and it gives the rest of the team increased attack and increased speed. Two of the best DPS buffs in the game. So basically, her kit is optimized to basically maximize the amount of damage your team can output right off the bat. So the goal is basically to just throw this move out and just try to burn them down as quickly as possible because you don't have to worry about revives and win ASAP. And if you don't, you basically lose because if she's not immortal, this hero is essentially worthless. Now let's go talk about builds. So how do you build Sinful Angie? It's actually extremely easy. Mine is extremely terrible, don't copy her, but generally all you want to do is stack speed and effect resist. Top ones will have a minimum of like 250 speed and they'll be pushing 200 to 250 effect resist, which is easier than it sounds because she has a lot of base effect resist already. The reason she doesn't care about any of the other stats is because you it's a DPS race anytime you use her. Basically, if you don't win while she's immortal, you lose. So all you need to guarantee is that her immortality does not get stripped. If a Basar puts unbuffable or something on her, it's game over. She's a completely useless hero and she's just going to be spamming S1s doing no damage. So you want her to be fast to go first. Alternatively, you can pair her with a fast CR pusher, like a like a fast C Dom or something. But generally, she should be fast on her own, and you need really high effect resist. Mine's unforgivably low, but she's on poverty gear right now because I don't really care about her that much. In terms of artifacts, um, she's a soul weaver, so you have access to so many good artifacts. I'm using a pluck plus six super duper water gun because I'm just trying to burst people down and I like giving my team extra attack. But more sensible artifacts would be things like Celestine if you want to give your team a little bit more sustain, uh, Wondrous Potion Vial in case one of your DPSers gets randomly stunned or something, she can dispel them, Stella Harpa, Idol's Cheer might be decent as well. Basically you can use any decent soul weaver artifact on her but those are probably the ones i mentioned are probably the most common ones or you could just be a troll like me and just use this stupid free artifact so your team does even more damage so that pretty much sums up how to build sinful angie an extremely easy hero to build speed effect resist that's it in terms of molas you don't have to mola her at all you can mola her s3 but 
honestly, I feel like in most situations, if you don't win in the two-turn immortality, you're going to lose anyway. So she's a great hero in the sense that you really do not need to invest any MOLA into her at all. Now, if you really love her and you're using her all the time, fine, feel free to. But really, she doesn't need any MOLAs to do her job. It's honestly one of her best qualities. So that's how you build her. Let's move on to the PvP showcase. Alright, so let's do a sinful Angie showcase. Um, we're going to hit this team, and uh, I'm going to pray that the Lilius is slower than my sinful Angie. Uh, she's faster, I basically lose because her gear is terrible. But we're just going to go super offense, because that's what sinful Angie's all about. This is like a top 100 player. I'm going to bring a basically naked sinful Angie against them. She has like 7,000 life. We'll see what happens. The Lilius does go first, so I auto lose, I think. Unless she resists this. She does have some effect resist. Oh, she resisted it. What a genius. <laughs> she only has, like, I want to say 80 effect resist or something, which is why you really want to build her very high um, effect resist to make sure she doesn't get resisted. Arbiter's dead. And note, he did not revive thanks to the power of Sinful Angie. But mine does. Blam. We dunk this team. Get some big damage out there. Now she does this thing. And when you use Sinful Angie, this is what I mean. You're going to go full damage. Just straight up offense. And your goal is to annihilate them as quickly as possible. Because with the attack buff, with the speed buff, with the dual attacks, the damage output of any Sinful Angie team is just absolutely ludicrous. And she basically blocks all revives, so you don't have to care about that at all. It's just a pure offense team. Now Charles is dead, FCC is dead, Lilius is dead, everything is dead. And um, this is a legend player here, so this is how you use Sinful Angie. You just want to go full balls to the wall DPS and just nuke them out as quickly as possible. Alright, let's try another top 50 player. Why am I breaking Crow? Because I'm hoping the F Clurry provokes him instead of Seaside, but it'll be 50-50 here, we'll see what happens. The Pigeon comes out. Ah, oh, damn, it went on Seaside. Oh, but I resisted it. What does Remnant go on? SSB? Alright, and this is fine. Now, we'll go ahead, put up the Trollful Song. I probably should have put Crow in the front, huh? <laughs> but it's okay. It works out just fine. We're going to try and push this Arbiter Vildred back. Because I'd like to get some damage on him. We're going to use SSB's S3. Because the FCC might just end up killing her with the S3. Get some unbuffables out there. And we get the skill nullifier up. Hopefully doesn't kill SSP. Yeah, she survived with the defense buff, so we get another counter here. Oh, and here we go. No revive for Arbiter. <laughs> Arbiter drops dead permanently. We're going to go ahead and just attack this F Clurry. FCC goes down. And you know what? We're just going to keep slapping into this F Clurry because this FCC is going to die to damage share. And look, a nice, easy, fast win against a very strong opponent. Sinful Angie is just a massive troll. So, Trollful Angie, is she good? Yeah, she's the bomb. I mean, she's an absolute monster in certain situations. Um, don't think you can bring her everywhere. It's the kind of hero where you look at a defense and you say, damn, Sinful Angie is going to dominate this, or you don't use her at all. So don't think you're going to bring her everywhere. I don't think she's that great in every single situation. Now, as always, let's give her a rating. So Arena Offense, I'm going to give her a solid A. So... You saw from the showcase that she can really make your team do an insane amount of damage. But the main thing that makes her valuable is the fact that you can block revives. If the team doesn't have a revive, that entire component of her kit 
is worthless. I mean, she still has the dual attacks and stuff, but against really tanky teams, um, sometimes it's not worth it to try to burst them down this way. You really need a proper tank buster team with like a defense break or something, and she's not always the most reliable in those situations, because with Sinful Angie, you need to win in those two turns, otherwise she becomes a useless hot pile of garbage. Serena so offense, I'll give her an A. Arena defense, I'm going to give her a C. The problem with Sinful Angie defenses is um, it's usually some kind of troll speed defense. Like I used to see one with like a Judith Sinful Angie and I actually lost to it. But it only really works once because once they know your speed, like I just brought like an Acid and killed the Judith. And that was it. Like this only really works on like a speed cleave defense. And against top players who actually have high speed options, speed cleave defenses are not going to be very reliable. But in the lower tiers, it might work. But at the upper tiers, they're just going to bring speed imprints and an ox lodge judge Kisei and just slam into you. So not the greatest arena defense hero. But at lower tiers, if you outspeed them, you can use her as some kind of trolley speed cleaver. Uh, Guild Wars Offense, I'm going to give her an S because, um, again, not in all situations. Like a Dark Corvus works in every single situation. She is an S in the situations where she's warranted. Like against a Maid Chloe team, she just butchers Maid Chloe teams. It's like an absolute joke because they're usually kind of on a squishier side and she will just burn through everyone with the dual attacks and the increased attack and speed. So make sure you bring her against the right defenses, but if you do, she's quite dominant in Guild Wars offense, in my opinion. Guild Wars defense, kind of the same problem as arena defense, except even worse because you have to make three heroes work around her, which kind of makes her unusable because what are you going to do? Like, she's not fast enough on her own, so you need like a CR pusher with her, and then what? Like, you have a solo DPS, you're just going to get tanked out, it's not going to work. So Guild Wars defense, I'm going to give her like a D, even worse than Arena. Uh, RTA, you know, I almost never see her in RTA, but I think I'll still give her a C. And because a lot of RTA matches do turn into kind of like DPS races, and she might actually work quite well there because like a 4 DPS or more common like a 2 DPS 2 Knight versus 2 DPS 2 Knight kind of situation is not that rare. And in that kind of situation, Sinful Angie can actually be pretty dangerous. But again, there's also a lot of tanky drafts in RTA. And in those situations, she's not going to be that good. And it's hard to predict what situation is going to be. So if anything, she would have to be like a last pick. But in the right situation, she might be okay. So again, those are my squirrel ratings. I could be wrong about some of them, but as always, those are my opinions based on my own experiences with the hero. She has an epic theme song. She's very trolly, and I don't know what it is about her. When I use her, I just have a lot of fun because the matches, I know they're going to be less than a minute long because I'm either going to truck them or just lose instantly. And because I have a short attention span being a uh, rodent, basically, um, that's a really big perk for me. So anyways, that's my review of Sinful Angie. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, or uh, hatred, you can go ahead and put it in the comment section below and uh, meet me. Till next time, boys. Peace out.